people like monkeys, and today I'm going to be explaining how proof of work works using monkeys. The holiday season is just around the corner, and when you sit down with friends and family and they ask you, how does this Bitcoin thing work? Explain it to me. You might want to start with proof of work. The reason I'm going to be explaining proof of work using monkeys is because monkeys are pretty simple to understand. I'm going to be going through this entire infographic here, but let's start with where Bitcoin mining is right now. Currently, of the entire 21 million Bitcoin, there have been 92.71% found. It's really important to think about Bitcoin in this way, because if you think about finding the Bitcoin or creating the Bitcoin, you might be thinking about it wrong. Think about it like a giant dirt pile full of gold. You can get the gold by uncovering it by removing the dirt. The amount of gold that is there will never change. It is there. It is done. End of story. Considering that 92.71% has been found, that leaves 7.29% remaining to be found. Let's enter monkeys. For the rest of this video, I'll be talking about CPUs, GPUs, and ASICs. And each of those will be equated to a monkey or a primate with a typewriter. To start, we're going to talk about gorillas with typewriters. Those equate CPUs. Now that we have that established, we need to talk about what it is that the monkeys with their typewriters are trying to do. The name of this game is whoever can get their monkey to type a legible word wins. The only thing that miners are trying to do is find a number that is under a certain threshold. If we think about our monkeys, the monkeys were randomly pounding away, slapping away on their keyboards, trying to find a legible word. That was all that they were trying to do, is find a legible word. The first monkey that found a legible word was rewarded with a nugget of gold. Since Satoshi Nakamoto was the only one with some monkeys pounding away playing this particular game, whoever can type out a word and get some gold, he was the first one to get some gold. And then Hal Finney decided to join the fun. He took his gorilla with a typewriter, told it to start typing away, and soon enough, that gorilla typed out some legible words. If a gorilla is a CPU, how many words can you expect your gorilla to get out? A CPU chip mining is measured in kilo hashes per second, kh per second, with a kh equating a thousand hashes, 1000 hashes per second. Our gorilla is able to type so fast he gets 1000 guesses a second. It's not bad. It's a pretty good gorilla. But after some time, people realized that gorillas weren't the best way to guess words. If you got a gorilla and he's got his big meaty fingers and he's typing away and he also wants to do some other things occasionally, not the best for that particular task. So it was eventually figured out that orangutans, which are your GPUs, are actually a little bit better for this task. They have more nimble fingers. They can type out a bit quicker too. And thus, we entered the era of GPU mining. GPUs can reach mega hashes per second with a mega hash equaling 1 million hashes, 1 million hashes per second. Now orangutans are clearly much, much better than gorillas, so the GPU era lasted for a while. But unbeknownst to most of the world for a long time, there was a group of mad professors working in secretive labs to develop, breed, and raise super typing chimps. These would be known as ASICs. So now if your gorillas can be typing away, trying to get a word 1,000 guesses every second, but your orangutans can be doing that at a million times a second, where does that leave this new breed? The chimps, bred and raised specifically for typing words. ASICs brought us into the era of terahashes. Chimps with typewriters, your ASICs, are able to guess one trillion guesses a second. Chimps with typewriters are unquestionably the best miners in the world. Your ASICs blow everything else out of the water. They blow the GPUs, your, your orangutans with typewriters out of the water, and it's not even uh, comparable with CPUs, gorillas with typewriters. Which brings me to timechaincalendar.com. For the last 14 days, the average hash rate has been 397.1 exahash, which is right around 400. We'll call it 400. That's 400 followed by 16 zeros. This is how many guesses are happening every second. 400 quintillion guesses every second. If you're like me, then there are many days where you wake up, look in the mirror, and think, I'm no brighter than a monkey. How will I ever figure out any of this Bitcoin stuff? And that is the perfect time to reach out to the Bitcoin way and schedule a free 30-minute consultation where they can answer any question that you might have. Reach out to the Bitcoin way, and they will absolutely 
have answers to whatever questions you might have surrounding Bitcoin. A lot of people think that what Bitcoin miners are doing is trying to solve difficult equations, some sort of super complex mathematical formulas that only these specialized computers can do. That's not what they're doing at all. All that ASICs are doing are trying to guess a number. They're trying to get a number that is under a certain threshold. So if we return to the monkeys, all that a Bitcoin miner, a farm with a whole bunch of monkeys with typewriters, is trying to do is get their monkeys to type out a legible sentence. The higher that the difficulty rises, the longer the sentence has to be. If the difficulty shifts down, then the sentence doesn't have to be so long, so it'll be easier for the monkeys to guess. And that is constantly fluctuating. It goes up, it comes down, depending on how many monkeys are online guessing. The more monkeys that are guessing, the harder the difficulty. To put this into a mental framework that you can understand a little bit better, all that Satoshi's gorilla had to guess was cat or dog, of any three-letter word. It doesn't matter what word it is. It, that's not what matters here. It's not a particular word. It's not a particular string of numbers that ASICs are trying to find. It's just anything that works, any number that is under a certain threshold, or if we use the monkeys, any word at all. Cat, bat, sad, man, whatever. To help you understand how simple it was for Satoshi's gorilla to guess that word compared to where we are now, if all Satoshi's gorilla had to do was get any word, any three-letter word together that made sense, then we're at a point now where the ASICs have to guess entire pages from a Shakespeare play in order exact with punctuation in place. And it's not that they're trying to get an exact page from Othello or Romeo and Juliet. It's any entire page from Shakespeare. That is the difficulty. I'm just trying to help you understand this conceptually. Monkeys get hungry and they eat bananas. This is why Bitcoin miners are constantly talking about energy. If you're a Bitcoin miner or somebody that has a whole farm of monkeys with typewriters pounding away, you've got to keep them fed so that they keep on pounding away on those keyboards and eventually guess a right string of characters that equates you getting a reward. The beauty of having a whole bunch of monkeys with typewriters is that they're quite mobile. You can shove them into the back of a van, you can put them into the back of a trailer, you can load them up onto a container ship, and then sail them off to where there's cheap bananas, and then start guessing until the cows come home. And if they find cheaper energy and it makes sense for them to relocate there, then they'll do so. Satoshi was the first person to start mining. He got a gorilla with a typewriter that was guessing a thousand guesses per second, and eventually it typed out cat, or dog, or whatever. The difficulty was very low. And then, later on, when many more people had joined in on this Bitcoin endeavor, people were using GPUs. They got their orangutans because they have more nimble fingers and so people were getting as many orangutans gpus as they could and feeding them the cheapest energy bananas that they could to keep them running guessing all the time but then we entered the era that we are currently in the era of asics super specialized typing chimps born and bred specifically for the task of typing on typewriters. That is all that they do. That is all they can do. They just sit there and they type. And yes, they are very hungry chimps, so they need a lot of energy, but they're really, really good at guessing. They are so much better than the other primates at guessing. They are guessing one trillion guesses every single second, which gets us to a global guessing power of 400 followed by 16 zeros. 400 quintillion guesses every second by the global network of monkeys, chimps with typewriters. And yes, they are very hungry chimps, so they eat a lot of bananas. And why would somebody get a whole bunch of chimps, specialized chimps with typewriters, and feed them bananas? What in the world would compel somebody to do that? Well, they would do that because they've realized that owning a piece of Bitcoin is owning inalienable rights to something that there will never be more than 21 million of. So if it means that you get a bunch of monkeys with typewriters and feed them bananas to get a piece of that property, you're going to do that. And if you don't have the ability to buy a bunch of monkeys and typewriters, because that is quite the operation, then you can buy some of that property from the people that do have the monkeys. And now you can explain to Uncle Jim at the dinner table that all Bitcoin mining is is a bunch of monkeys pounding away on typewriters trying to guess certain letters, strings of characters, certain legible sentences, and those that do guess it because they fed them a bunch of bananas, that's your energy, get some Bitcoin. That's it. There's nothing complicated about it. It's just monkeys with typewriters. Now that you know how to explain Bitcoin mining by talking about monkeys with typewriters eating bananas, guessing strings of characters, and trying to get the right sentence, check out this video over here where I talk about buying Bitcoin being like buying the entire internet back in 1990, or a piece of the internet in 1990.